during the burning of air fuel mixture inside the engine cylinder, and due to friction between moving parts, a huge amount of heat is generated, with temperature exceeding nearly 2000 degrees Celsius in the combustion chamber. If this heat is not effectively managed, it can lead to engine knocking or detonation issues. Over the time, engine components such as the cylinder head, piston, and valves can reach their melting points, potentially leading to engine seize, or mechanical failure in engine due to parts welded together. To prevent such damage and ensure efficient performance, the engine cooling system plays a critical role by removing this excess heat from the engine to maintaining normal operating temperature inside the engine. So, in this video, we will learn about different types of engine cooling systems. Let's start. There are three types of cooling systems used in motorcycle engines. Air-cooled engine, oil-cooled engine, liquid-cooled engine. Air-cooled engines rely on the flow of air around the engine to cool down. These engines typically have fins on the outside of the engine's cylinder block and cylinder head, which increase the surface area of the engine to dissipate heat that generated during combustion. As air flows over these fins when motorcycle running, it carries away the heat from the engine. Air-cooled engines are commonly found in small to mid-range commuter motorcycles with 100cc to 200cc engine displacements. For example, Hero Splendor Plus, Honda Shine 125, and TVS Apache RTR 160. Pros of air-cooled engines. First, simple and lightweight design, because they don't require any additional cooling components. Second, cost-effective. A production and maintenance costs are less. Third, suitable for short-distance travel. Fourth, easy to maintain or repair. Cons of air-cooled engines. First, less efficient cooling, in hot climatic conditions or at high speed. Second, noisy operation. Third, uneven cooling. It occurs when front side of the engine exposed to the airflow it cools effectively, while rear side not in the contact of an airstream that means it won't get cooled as front side. Due to uneven cooling some parts to run hotter than other parts, potentially leading to premature wear. As engine size increase, the heat it generates also increase. At this point, only air cooling is not sufficient, that's where oil cooling comes into play. Oil cooled engine is basically the same as an air cooled engine, with the key differences being that it uses engine oil not only for lubrication but also as a heat transfer medium. When engine runs continuously, engine oil gets heat up that decreases its viscosity, in other words engine oil becomes thinner and less effective. Which can lead to increased wear and tear between the moving parts of the engine. Therefore, external oil cooler is installed in front of the engine, that helps to cool the engine oil through passing air. This cooled engine oil is circulated back into the engine through the oil pump, to maintain consistent operating temperature of the engine. Oil cooled engines are generally comes in midrange motorcycles with 150cc to 300cc engine displacements. For example, Bajaj Pulsar 220F, Heroes Pulse 204V and Suzuki Jixxer SF250. Pros of oil cooled engines. First, enhanced cooling efficiency, by using engine oil to absorb and dissipate heat. Second, enhanced lubrication by engine oil circulation. Third, it is simple and cost-effective technology as well as easier to maintain. Cons of oil-cooled engines. First, limited cooling capacity. In extreme conditions or high-performance motorcycles. Second, require regular oil changes. Liquid-cooled engines provide higher cooling efficiency by using a special coolant to regulate engine temperatures effectively. This coolant is a blend of water and antifreeze. It's designed with anti-corrosive, anti-freezing and high heat carrying capacity. A coolant is circulated through water jackets around the engine's cylinder block and cylinder head, where the coolant absorbs heat generated by the combustion process, causing the coolant's temperature to rise. As a result, the hot coolant is pumped to a radiator that installed in front of the engine. The radiator contains a network of small capillary tubes that are surrounded by metallic fins, which increase the surface area for heat dissipation. This radiator cools down the hot coolant by atmospheric air passing through its fins. When airflow is insufficient such as the motorcycle is idling or moving at low speeds, an additional cooling fan activates automatically to ensure efficient cooling. The cooled coolant is circulated back around the engine, where a constant cycle of this process effectively maintains consistent operating temperature of the engine. During this process, to prevent the engine from overheating or overcooling by using a thermostat valve, that regulates coolant flow based on the engine's temperature, to maintain ideal operating temperature at any conditions. Liquid-cooled engines are used across all segments, starting from 150cc commuter motorcycles to above 1000cc sport bikes. For example, entry-level motorcycles, Yamaha Roan 5 V4, KTM RC200, midrange motorcycles, Kawasaki Ninja 400, KTM Duke 390, 
High Performance Motorcycles, Honda CBR 650R, Kawasaki Jed 900, Sport and Racing Bikes, Ducati Panigale V4, Suzuki Hayabusa, Pros of Liquid Cooled Engines. First, Superior Cooling Efficiency. In extreme riding conditions or at high speed. Second, High Performance. This engine's to run at higher compression ratios and higher RPMs that maximizing power output. Third, Quieter Operation. A coolant helps absorb engine noise and vibrations. Cons of liquid cooled engines. First, increase complexity and weight. This engines require additional cooling components such as radiator, water pump, thermostat, water jackets and hose pipes. Second, higher cost. More expensive to manufacture, repair, and maintain. Third, higher maintenance. Requires regular coolant changes, radiator cleaning, and component inspections. Conclusion. Each engine cooling system serves a different purpose based on performance needs, riding conditions, and motorcycle type. You choose a motorcycle that fits your needs best. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts or questions, drop them in the comment section. Also, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more exciting automatic and mechanical topics.